Hello, hello, hello. If you've never seen me before, I'm Coin Ring Maker from coinringmaker.com. I make coins into rings. And today we're going to be working on this 1969 quarter coin ring. For some reason, 69 is a really difficult year to find. But we're going to go ahead and get started on this in just a second. Uh, if you guys want to check out the fall sale, we've got a bunch of coin rings on sale right now. I do recommend checking them out before that sale ends. Up to 66% off, so tap on that link if you're interested. And we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we got to do is punch a hole in our quarter. And if anybody has any questions while I work on this, feel free to put them in the chat. If you're enjoying the live, make sure to tap the screen with all your might. And if you want to see more of my stuff, make sure to hit that follow button. Let's go. There is our Eagle and George Center Punch. And we got it our own punch, now we're going to knock that off. That's how our coin is looking so far. If you guys will look on the inside of the coin here, on that edge where we just punched the center out, you can see it's a little rough. So what I'm going to do is take a deburring tool and kind of cut away the inside of that rough edge. Just smooth it out. There we go, that's looking a lot better. Now we're gonna go ahead and anneal our coin. That's a process where we heat it up with some fire. It's gonna help soften the metal up. Good afternoon. How are we doing today? So when I heat up copper coins, I usually watch for the flame color to change. Right now it's a pretty straightforward blue. When the copper gets warm enough, it'll start turning kind of a dark orange. That's how I know it's it's hot enough. So we'll just watch for that flame color to change here. You see a little bit of that orange peeking through there. There we go. Plenty hot. Thanks for the rose, man. And then we'll quench it real quick. Just some regular water. Dry it off. Take another look at it. It's looking pretty good. The next step is gonna start, uh, we're gonna start folding it. And before I do that, I'm just gonna do a little promo. 
Uh, if you guys want to check out more of my finished work, tap on this fall sale button right here and just take a look around. A lot of great coin rings are on sale, so uh, check that out if you're interested. What am I doing? We're taking a 1969 quarter and making it into a size 10 ring for one of my customers. Oh yeah, These, this thing is going to give you a perfect hole every time as long as you make sure it's tightened all the way. It's, it's a great investment for any coin ring maker who plans on doing this for more than two weeks. Jason makes some damn good tools. So here we've got a doming block. We'll pop our quarter on there and give it a nice fold. This is a Delrin ball, so it's really hard plastic. That'll help us get our first fold there. And here's how it's looking so far. Thanks for the rose. Now we'll go to my favorite die. This is the first coin ring making tool I ever bought, and I still use it every day. It's a 17 degree 1 inch by 0.9 inch. 17 degree die. It's absolutely fantastic. Legacy brand tools. Makes good tools too. We'll pop our cone on top of there. Give it another fold. Now these early Washington quarters do tend to get a little wavy once we start stretching them out. So I am going to keep an eye on that. It usually happens around the date. So as I stretch this, if I see any weird waviness, uh, we may have to correct that. We're gonna hop up here to the ring stretcher. That's this bad boy. Thanks for following Jasper. If anybody else wants to, hit that follow button. Hit that cut edge with a little bit of steel wool before we start stretching. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, if you're looking to get a coin ring, we do have a pretty dang good fall sale going right now. If you want to check that out, I'll go ahead and pin the link down here for anybody who's missed it. Bam. Right there. This is a pretty nifty tool right here. This is called a ring stretcher. So it's got a bunch of individual splines on each side. And when I lift this lever up, this spike right here moves upward and pushes the splines out, which is what stretches the ring. I usually only stretch them until the gap at the top here between the ring and the stretcher kind of closes up. So that's pretty good right there. Go ahead and check our date. Not getting too wavy. That's good. I'm going to flip it over and stretch it the other way because now there's a gap on this side. And we'll just stretch it until that closes up. Flip it. That's going to be the next one I work on. So as soon as we finish this one, that's what I'm going to make. I thought you said you bought the rounds. I didn't think you bought the ring from me. <laughs> You can make these. Why are you buying rings from me? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. Not everybody's got the tools to do this. A little, a little silly. Target size on this one is a 10. We stretched it out well past what we need. Hey, man, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. 
So now we're going to head back over to the one ton arbor press over here and start uh, reducing it with that same 17 degree die I was using before. Get a nice overhead shot of this. I try not to reshape it too much in any direction so it stays kind of even. So that's why I'm flipping it around so much here. Do little pushes, flip it. That helps the, uh, the band stay nice and even. That's looking really good. Very nice. Now this should be under size 10 now. Just over nine, which is good. Because on the inside of the ring, there's a, a bit of a lip. Kind of hard to see it on this light, but there's a little bit of raised metal right on this reeded edge here. So we're gonna cut that away, and then we should be pretty dang close to a size 10. Now, if anybody wants to check out the Coin Ring Maker Fall Sale, there's a link down here for it. Just tap on it, you can shop right through TikTok. It's pretty cool. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to tap the screen if you're enjoying the live and hit the follow button if you want to see more coin ring making awesomeness. Yeah. yeah. I'm really glad that date didn't wobble at all. That's a pain in the butt to try and correct. Thanks for following, Jeff. And again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If there's a specific type of coin ring, a uh, specific state, uh, mount, or uh, year you're looking for, let me know. I work on everything, so I'm sure I can find what you're looking for. Almost got 500 likes, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to, can I do a quarter ounce? gold eagle using the whole coin so it's bezel mounted no but i have uh, made quarter ounce gold eagles into uh, bands like this before and i do have one on the website right now uh the website is uh, is coinringmaker.com right here uh, there's a coupon on here for you guys too. You can use the coupon code WELCOME. It'll save you 10%. And the website is coinringmaker.com. You can take a screenshot of that, save it for later. If you want to go directly to the store, you can go to buycoinrings.com or you can tap this link that I'm going to pin down here. That's going to take you to the fall sale. I've got quite a few really nice items on sale for that. Uh, so you can save a little money and get yourself something cool. If that sounds good to you. Tap that link and check it out. How's it going, Splash? Having a good day? I'm having a pretty good day. I spent all morning cleaning the house, so I'm pretty proud of myself. It's looking good. We swept. We vacuumed. We did laundry. We did it all.
spent the morning replanting plants with Splash. Very nice. I bet he was a good helper. Or she. Is Splash a boy or a girl? I, I don't think I've ever asked. <laughs> very nice, very nice. It's always nice to have a helper. This is a 1969 quarter. I think it's the funniest quarter because it has 69 on it. People that usually order these are either relatively old or have a sense of humor. Born in 69, the summer of 69? There's a song that'll get stuck in your head. Very nice. Now we've got that edge nicely cleaned up. We'll go ahead and check our size again. Should be pretty close to a 10. Stretch it a little bit, we should get there. <laughs> I bet you do. There's no good songs for the year I was born. There's no songs like the summer of 88. No, nope. not a whole lot of songs for 88. I think it's funny. A lot of people think I'm either like way older than I am or way younger than I am. Nobody really guesses my actual age. They're like, well, your temperament seems pretty old. You don't act like a Gen Z. Fresh Prince Summertime. We're lucky we uh, we showed up just in time to enjoy the 90s. The emergence of the internet. Adult swim, after school. <laughs> it's a good time to grow up. Born in 90. Very nice. Man, I keep either just overstretching. We're gonna get it there. We're gonna get it. It's so close. Tiniest little stretch. That's perfect. Perfect ten. Now I get to do my favorite part, which is where we take this freshly crafted coin ring and make it nice and shiny. If y'all want to check out the fall sale at coinringmaker.com, there's a little link down here. Super easy to tap on. Take you no time at all to just tap on that and take a look at what we have on sale right now. And I sure would appreciate it. We're going to take this 4-0 steel wool and knock off as much of this gray fire scale from the surface of the coin as we can. 
Now this is steel wool. Steel wool is usually pretty abrasive. Uh, it tends to scratch up the surface of metal, but this is 4-0 steel wool. So it's like the finest steel wool you can get. And it's actually pretty good at removing fire scale. Have you seen any market at all for copper rings? Copper round rings? Um, not, not really. Um, I've had a couple of copper, like one ounce rounds on the website for the past three years, and I've maybe sold two or three of them. Not, they're not very popular. 90% sells a lot better. Like 90% quarters, half dollars, and dollars are probably the most popular things that I make. Uh, the reason I have copper clad coin rings is I just want my rings to be accessible to everybody. And if you can't quite afford uh, silver, I want people to have another option. But as far as like copper rounds, I really haven't worked on one in like eight months. And I usually only make them <laughs> to take product photos. Like they're not, they're not super popular. It's a good question. Now fine silver uh, does sell pretty well. Like quarter ounce and half ounce fine silver rounds. There's a lot of designs for those. I've, I've done pretty good at making sales with those but like I said 90% is definitely the most popular because you get the shine of the silver but you also get like the resilience of the metal 90% silver is a bit stronger than just fine silver gloves nah Do make silver quarters, half dollars, and dollars in the rounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where the bulk of, of my sales come from. I got some polish on here. It's gonna help knock the rest of that fire scale off. No, it's um it's super fine steel wool. So it's not very abrasive at all. Uh, like if you get a really good look at it, it's it's not really that bad. Now if I was like just straight rubbing it on my skin, yeah, I could probably irritate it, but my fingers are fine. Um, I think the best idea for copper is bells. Have you ever made a a coin ring bell? I think copper would work really good for those. Because people don't have to actually wear them. I think a lot of people are turned off by uh, the green finger that comes along with copper. Not everybody. I've definitely had customers who don't mind. Uh, some people prefer copper jewelry, but I think Bell's is a good alternative. What's going on, Bex? Bex in the house. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask. See, I've made a couple of Bell's. I didn't, I didn't get too into it. I, I really just like making rings. Uh, if you do order... A uh, copper coin ring for me, I recommend applying clear fingernail polish to it. Uh, that will need to be like reapplied depending on how active you are wearing your jewelry or how much you sweat. Um, but it's the best like low cost option I found. There are some products out there specifically for coating jewelry. I think one of them is called like Everlast, but it's basically clear fingernail polish. And I think most people can track down some clear fingernail polish relatively inexpensively, and it seems to work pretty well. 
But if you're really worried about uh, copper, I do recommend 90% silver. I think it just makes better jewelry. Yeah, it works pretty well. I haven't, I haven't really found anything that works better. I've seen other coin ring makers uh, powder coat their jewelry. And you can get some like interesting colors with that. But I'm, I'm hesitant to use powder coating because like some of them can be not great to wear on your skin. So you, you need to find like jewelry grade powder coating. You gotta be really, really careful. And I don't want anybody to like have a bad reaction to my jewelry, have a rash or break out or have some kind of allergy. So that's why I usually just send uh, my rings out raw and leave it up to the customer on what they want to apply to the surface of it. I, I haven't tried it on silver. Uh, because it's pretty easy to shine up silver if you get something like this. If you get these, uh, you can shine up silver in like 30 seconds. But I suppose if you wanted to prevent it from oxidizing, uh, keeping the shine, I think you could put uh, a coat on it if you wanted to. It's really up to you. Yeah, I've seen a few other coin ring makers who use powder coating. And I'm not... I'm not trying to diss them or anything. I'm just really careful. Like, I, I don't want to have any legal issues with my customers. I don't want to hurt anybody. Um, so I, I have been hesitant to give that a try. I also have seen some really nice results with it, too. You can get really nice contrast in the details. Like I said, there's different color powder coatings. But it's not something I've dived into yet. If anybody else has any questions, let me know. If you guys want to check out what some of my finished work looks like, uh, you can tap on this little gold chain I'm going to pin down here. We've got a fall sale going on right now. So quite a few coin rings are on sale. If you're interested in getting one for a bargain, go check it out. This one is about done. Where do you get the powder? Uh, there's uh, several different suppliers of powder coating, which is another reason I haven't got into it. Is I, I would really have to track down like the safest powder coat to be worn on skin before I even ordered anything. I'd have to do a lot of research that looks really good very nice all right guys i'm gonna take about a five minute break and then when i get back on here uh, we're gonna be working on my favorite coin ring to make it's a half ounce Fine silver. Don't tread on me around. I'll show you guys what that looks like real quick. No wobble. Yeah, that one came out really nice and straight. Yeah, this is the coin we're going to be working on in about five minutes. It's a half ounce fine silver round. Makes a super cool ring. I think I've got a finished one. Over here. The wife snagged it. She's got it. <laughs> They're so cool, my wife steals them. Uh, so, <laughs> if you guys want to see me work on this in about five minutes, uh, hit that follow button and you'll get a notification when I go live. If anybody has any questions before I hop off of here, now's the time to ask them. And we'll take another close look at our 69 coin ring. Yeah, that's really nice and straight. 
Very nice. Alright guys, uh, thanks for stopping by and watching me work. And we'll see you again in about five minutes. Peace.